Okay, so I have on the bench uh, a six-speed transmission called the U660E, and this is out of a 2011 Lexus RX350. And the complaint of this, uh, with this transmission was a delay in drive when hot. All right, and I did verify the complaint. I kept the car overnight, and I wanted to try this when it was cold. Uh, when the car was cold, it really had no delay. Reverse was always good, and once it locked in, it upshifted fine and drove fine. All right, but the hotter it got, the worse the delay got. And it was full of fluid and no codes present. So pretty much what we're dealing with here is an issue in the C1 clutch, uh, possible valve body issue, or a possible end cover issue. And I did find the problem and it is with the end cover, which I want to show you guys what I found. All right, so um, I'm going to do like a highlight video. I tore the unit down and laid it on my bench a little early. And I really don't want to try to keep the cars that long to wait an extra day to get it torn down and order what I need for it. So I got the cover coming. Uh, I have an overhaul kit with new pistons because the pistons on this transmission are problematic. So every overhaul, they should be changed. Um, I have the new uh, end nut coming, but that's gonna be um, Monday. And we're gonna go through the one drum, which is the C1 and C2 clutch. Uh, we're gonna go through, this is like the whole pump area. And this is the B3 and the B1, and this is the B2 clutch. All right, it has one spray in it. There's an anti rattle clip I'm gonna show you. Uh, I wanna show you the case, a uh, common problem. <clears throat> the number one common problem with this is the uh, pressed fit bearing that's into the case becomes loose and it spins in the case. This actually is good. This transmission, it doesn't even, I don't even think it has 70,000 miles on it. But again, I'm gonna show you what the problem is. Um, so I guess that's about it. Um, I'll go through some more stuff uh, as, uh, as we go through, uh, for instance, on the end cover, you know, there's a couple of bolts that uh, they don't want torqued as tight, like if the end cover, uh, I think the end cover torque, I gotta look it up, but I'm thinking 17 foot-pounds, but there's two bolts uh, that they just want to work down to 12 foot-pounds because they don't want that area of the case distorted and they load it up with Loctite since it's not torqued that tight. And the same thing with the bell housing. There's a couple uh, that I believe the bell housing is 23 foot-pounds, but those they want to 17. Um, but we're going to go over all that. I'll show you the areas of that and, and we'll just go over the uh, unit. I'll show you where the fill is, the standpipe, a common problem that happens when you're filling it. Um, and I guess that's about it. So let me get a little closer and we'll start by going over some of the cases and stuff so I get those off the bench and then we'll get into the uh, internals of the transmission. So let me get a little closer. Okay, so let's start with the case. Right here is the main case. And this right here is that press fit bearing. Okay, now of course the ball bearing is going to turn, but if I can turn this whole thing which I can't, uh, then this case would be no good. Because again, it's a pressed fit, and we send it out. Uh, I get you know my parts through the company called Transtar, and they send these cases out for repair. They have some in stock, so it would just be a matter of uh, switching the cases. Let me just move up a little bit here. Okay. All right, so this is good. So I do not have to swap this case out. All right. Um, also, on this section, you have the B3 piston. That's gonna sit right here. I do actually have a new one. All right, here is my new piston. And you got a little tab sticking right here. All right, and this tab is gonna sit right in here. All right, so this piston, when it sits in here, it's gonna face, the opening is gonna face here. So when the transfer gear goes in, it won't hit the piston. Okay, so it's going to kind of sit like that. Now, of course, this pistol will go in anyway, but then you won't be able to get the gear. All right, so there's a little notch cut out right here where this tab is going to go. All right, and that is the B3 piston. And then you have your return spring to go in here, and you press it down, 
and you put your snap ring in. Okay, now after that is in, then you can put this gear on here after the piston is in. And then and then you have this planetary that goes, this is the one big planet here. And there's a, it takes a big nut. I have, I have the nut coming and I have the spanner socket coming, which I'll show you guys. But this goes on here. But of course, you have the race. You have another race. You got one that goes here. And then you have the race that goes into the back. So that has to go on first, you know, the race for the bearing. All right, so when you take, when I press this out, then of course this is gonna fall out. So that'll go in. Um, and that'll get that together. Okay, now up here, you have a seal, a little round seal that goes in this section right here. Okay, and then the pump is gonna go on here, but there's a seal here, and as I'm gonna show you the pump, there's a seal on that as well. Okay, and you got a couple, you got a dowel here. Uh, when you set the pump in place, final drive goes here. All right, let's turn this around. Now this is where your end cover. All right, your B2 piston is going to go in here. And then you stack everything up. Uh, right before you put the end cover on, you got three O-rings. One, two, three that go in here that seal the, uh, that back cover for the uh, uh, clutch feeds. And I believe one also is lube. So these feed the, uh, the C1, the C2, and, and lube. That's what they should feed. And then we got to put this over here. And before you put the valve body on, you got two seals that go there. Alright, so this is the main case. Um, if I could think of anything else, I'll get it back up here, but that should be good for now. Let me just move this aside. Just a shot of the internal of the bell housing. Right, you got a, a spot here where the O-ring goes on the pump, a uh, section of the pump, and it'll seal against this hole right here. All right, so that's the belt housing. Okay, here is the one-way clutch. Oh, you know, I'm going to have to get that case back up here again. Okay, there is an anti-rattle clip on this. I gotta make sure that you don't lose it. And that you want to look at an approximate location is probably like right around here where that anti-rattle clip is gonna sit once you have uh, when you have that in place. It's somewhere, you know, it's probably like right right around here, or something like that, you know, in this area. That's where that clip uh, sits. But be careful not to lose it. That's the important thing. All right, so this also, there's a big ring here and here. And this rig turns one way, locks the other. And there also is a fairing here. sits in here, the lip is a, a lip which is going to face down, so it's going to go in just like that. And a snap ring that holds the uh, spray again. Okay, a quick shot of the final drive. Hmm. Quick shot of the B2 clutch. I mean, clutch is a pretty good shape. You know, I do have some coming um, because of a uh, problem here. They are not here yet. Okay, also on this, this computer is attached right to the transmission. I guess I gotta get the case back up here once again. It plugs right in to the valve body. All right, so these two bolts, the, the harness sticks up. All right, and 
here is where it plugs in. Here's where your power and grounds and communication lines come in. And with the harness sticking up, it sits right here and it plugs right in to the trans. So really no external wiring. If you have speed sensor codes, solenoid codes, really nothing you can check. You know, you have to drop out the valve body uh, to check any of that stuff. speed sensors, computer plugs right into here. This is what's going to stick up out of the case. Here's all your solenoids, uh, pressure switches, and you want to be careful when you get to the solenoids. If you are going to remove them, mark them where they go because they can be installed incorrectly. All right, so I'll put you the valve body there. Uh, all right, give me one second. Let me just clean this oil up here. Okay, so here's the back cover, and this is where my problem is. All right, so the C1 and C2 drum fits in here. All right, and there's also a bearing. Okay, that sits down in here. You got two sealing rings here to seal the on the outside, you have the C2 clutch that seals. And on the inside, you have a ring here to seal the C1 clutch. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in here and I'm gonna air check this clutch. And it's this way you can hear what it sounds like. All right, let me just get the hose over here. Okay, so I'm gonna air check that C1 clutch and you're gonna hear a big, big leak. Okay, this is down all the way. Plus, the other isn't even applying it. Okay, it's just leaking. So I'm coming on a little bit, but that is that is my delay, uh, one hundred percent. So again, the clutch. Let me just take this back off. The C one clutch gets fed through the center. So if I blow air through the center. Hear how solid it is? So we got some kind of a leak in between, uh, you know, in between the drum and the cover. All right. So since I know that it gets fed in through the center, I'm going to look down through the center of the cover, and what there is is a huge ring groove. Okay, there's a huge, this, my, my scribe is getting caught in the groove. I'm moving it up and down. There is a huge ring groove in here causing this delay. So what I do here, I'm leaving this out so the ring is gonna sit in a different spot and put this in. And now there's no, now there's no, no more leak. It even holds the pressure. And then we put it back. So now the ring is what it should be. And again, I got nothing. Kind of just free flowing air. So if I put a lot of air to it, now that what is, you know, got 150 pounds pumping in, but I like to air check. Just put a little bit of air like this to make sure the clutch is coming on and it's barely com coming on. All right, so that is my problem right there. That is my delay and drive hot. Okay, like I said before, the other pistons, you know, these are molded pistons and they do have problems. So I would definitely change these pistons on every oval. Let's take another look at the cover here. All right, so we got this bearing. Let me just take this bearing off and put it aside so it doesn't fall. All right, so the clutch feeds in here. Oil in here, I was wet air checking and looking for the leak. I was working on it before. Okay, so technically, when this is in, is in the car, this is the fill. All right, you fill it from here. And 
and then you take the plug out of the pan and here is your standpipe. Okay, so you fill it until it runs out and then you start the car and then you fill it again until it runs out. All right, now, I don't know if you can call it a common issue, but if you're not familiar with how to filling it, with how to fill this, um, on two or three occasions, I've had gotten calls from my wholesale account saying, hey, we serviced this transmission, and now since we did it, it's not shifting right, it's throwing speed sensor codes, I don't know what the heck is going on, uh, just from servicing it. So I said, let me get the car here, let me see what's going on with it, but I kind of already know what's going on, and what's going on is when they're filling it, they're filling it, believe it or not, until it's running out of here. I mean, this thing is probably four quarts over full. So what we did one time, and the last one happened about six months ago, uh, it, was a, it was a Lexus with this transmission. So I had the tech, the guy that works here, I said, you know, let's check the fluid level on this thing, raise it up and check it. So the car was running, we raised it in the air, and he, he takes the speed handle, he takes the plug out, the oil comes out and he quickly puts it back in and says, okay, it's full. I said, no, now that we know it's full, I said, take the plug out, let's get a bucket and leave it out. And I'm telling you, at least, and we just held the bucket there and the oil was draining with the car running, draining, draining for 10 minutes. And we got four or five quarts out of this thing. And then once it was at the proper level, it worked okay. All right, so that's the fill and this is the check. Let me just grab this, give me one second. Okay, so I have a, um, I have an end cover coming on uh, in, a, in a day or so, probably, uh, probably here on Monday. Um, so that is my problem. It has that huge groove in it. I actually have a U760, which is the four cylinder version of this transmission. You know, it's basically the same, but there are some differences. And I pulled that cover off just to compare it, and there is absolutely no groove in that cover. So this is my problem 100%. All right, so now uh, we're going to take this drum apart, the C1 and C2 clutch drum. We're going to break this thing all down. Um, maybe I will move it over here. Let me just reposition the camera um, so I can put the shaft down through the, um, the hole in the bench. Maybe I can work with it a little better. Um, all right, so just give me one second. Okay. All right, so here's a bearing that goes right in here. I just want to move this because it's going to fall out. Um, all right, so what I got to do now is go over to the press. I got to press this down and I got to take this snap ring out in here. All right, so I'm going to do that. Um, it's a you know, pretty easy snap ring to get. You don't really need pliers. I'm just going to uh, press it down and get it out with my scrub. All right, so let me do that, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, all right, so I got the snap ring out. All right, so we're gonna remove the apply and the springs, the apply plate and the return springs. All right, now we have a snap ring. I'm gonna take the snap ring out. Okay. Now we're going to remove our piston. This is our C2 apply piston. Okay, there's that. That, of course, is going to be changed. I've got all new pistons for this. All right, now there's another piston here which is kind of attached to the drum, so you can't do much with that. Now, this is a 2011. I don't know, there may be different, uh, you know, models. That, you know, I don't know if this would be the same as an earlier model or a later model, but this is a 2011. All right, so now we have a little wavy spacer snap ring here that's going to go on top of the piston. And then we have another snap ring that we're going to pull out. Okay. And then it's going to go there. All right, so now we're going to flip this over. Okay, and now we can take off the C2 apply, apply ring. That'll come right off. All right, let me just back out a little bit here. All right, so this whole thing will come right off. And then 
we have the uh, C2 frictions, all right, and there are three of them there. All right, so the small, the pressure plate, you know, would go down first because the piston is on the back, okay? All right, so for that pressure plate to sit on, well, you know what, let me do this. There is a little snap ring here, all right, that we're gonna take out. This holds the, the hub in, all right? Now, I'll show you what I do with this thing so it doesn't hit the bench and go flying. You got a couple of rags here. I'm gonna lay this drum down. All right, I got snap ring pliers. I'm gonna spread it, get to each end of the clip. Okay, and it'll land right on the rig. Here it is. Okay, it's like a half, half clip almost. Okay, very good. Now with that, you can pull the hub out. You have a bearing here, and you have a race here. All right, now you have two snap rings. One is uh, kind of for the pressure plate to sit on for the C2, and the other one is the C1 clutch to hold that down. Okay, so let's take the one snap ring out. Okay, there's that. And then the other one. Okay, there's that. I have this marked uh, with two notches, you know, for uh, so I know how it goes. All right, and now the C1 will come out, and there are four frictions. Now, if you needed to adjust clearance or anything on these, the pressure plates, I believe, are selective. Okay, so here is this. Now, you know what? I wanted to show you the bolts, so I'm going to get those cases back up here again. Uh, once we're done with this. All right, now what's left is the C1. I have the new C1 piston set in here because I was playing around just trying to figure out what the heck is going on. Uh, but I'm going to pop the snap ring off and I'm gonna show you the setup. All right, so just give me a moment and I will do that. Okay, small snap ring. And we got the balance piston. Return springs. And then the main, the applied piston. And these, these are new, these are the new ones. Because again, I was just trying to see uh, where the problem was because again, these pistons do have issues. Um, and one of them can cause a delay in drive. And what can happen with these C1 pistons or with any of these is the um, seal can collapse in here. So basically when you turn this drum upside down, the piston would fall right out. Uh, so you know, you know the kind of seals are shrank or they're tucked in or something to that effect. But again, these pistons are problematic. I recommend changing them on every overhaul. All right. This aside. Let me just show you quick. Okay. All right, on, on the case with this cover. So this cover is gonna sit here. So um, I believe it is, I'm just wipe some of this oil. You'll find different bolts or the gold colored bolts, one here and one here. All right, and again, those are uh, an area where Toyota would feel if they were over tightened, the case may get distorted. So the torque spec for 
the back cover with all the other bolts is 17 foot pounds and these two are 12 foot pounds. So I put some Loctite on it, you're talking down to 12 pounds and that's how Toyota ones are done. All right, here on the front, uh, let's see, the three on the bottom, one, two, three, uh, they want uh, torque. The bell housing spec is 23 foot-pounds and these three here which should be identified by a gold color bolt But you'll have a lot more trouble getting these three out than all the rest because these are loaded up with Loctite is uh, 17 foot-pounds Okay Now let's take a look All right, so this is your pump. Let me just move this up a little bit. And this is your B1 and B3 set. You got a couple of hubs in here. There's a planet here. On the top is the B3. Okay, so that's this piston again, uh, the B3 piston. Okay, so on the B3, B1 clutch setup, I got a little close because I want to show you this snap ring. Okay, it's got the two ends on it. And this has to go just like this. Okay, it has to go like that. All right, so we're gonna take that off. We'll leave that off. We'll take these bearings, we'll take the bearings off here. Okay. Now we're gonna back out a little bit. Okay. All right, so we're gonna take the B3 clutch out. That's that. Now you have like a thick pressure plate and a thinner pressure plate, and the thick one is going to go on top, and the thinner one will go on the bottom, or down, down into. Okay, then we can lift this off. Okay, the hub, and it's also a ring here, and we got a bearing race. Okay, and we can lift this off too. All right, you got a, a planetary and you have a bearing race here. Let me just back out a little more. Give me one second, please. Okay, just one of my wholesale accounts dropping a car off, uh, probably tomorrow. All right, so we got that out. Now we're going to lift this off. Okay, we got a bearing here and this will also come out. There's your input shaft. I'm going to change these ceiling rings. All right, now I want to get up close um, for when we take the uh, the B1 clutch out. Okay, because there's a couple of snap rings in here. There's a spacer um, that I want to show you. So let me just uh, switch angles, and then we're going to get the pump out. Um, and then I guess we can close out the video. All right, so just um, give me a moment here. Um, actually, you know what? Let me just do the pump now, because that won't, that won't matter. Okay, so uh, I have the bolts out. You got bolts here that have to come out. And then once you get all the internals out, you got bolts here that have to come out. All right, I, got, I have two uh, bolts in there, and they are all T30s. So let me just take these out. See? Okay, this is the pump. Uh, you got the dots on the gears and they face up. All right, I have the front seal out, pump bushing. I was also reading, doing research, when I was doing research on this trans, um, they claim there are two pump bushings early and late. So if you get, I don't know, this is an 11. Um, so I don't know what they would consider this, uh, but uh, you'd have to measure, I guess, I think it's the inside diameter, but if you put an early pump bush, if you knock out the, the bushing on a late pump, 
and you get an early one, you know, it's just going to drop right in, so you know right away it's not right. But um, through the research I've done, um, there are two pump cushions. Okay, so let's get this out of here. I can put this here, and now I want to get a little closer up on this. Uh, so I can show you the snap rings. There's more snap rings. So let me do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so we have two snap rings in here and both openings of the snap ring have to go here. Okay, so let's take out the first one. And I want to show you what that snap ring looks like. Okay, you see the little tab? Little tab right here. Okay, that goes here. That goes right here, that tab. Okay, I'm going to take the spacer out. And then we have another snap ring. Which releases the springs and stuff like that for the uh, uh, return springs. And this has a tab here. And that tab is going to go here, right here. So the opening, again, is there. OK, and then we can take the pressure plate off. Whoops. Then we have our return springs. And then we have our clutches. This is the V1. And then our piston. piston and then this is all stripped in here and um, you know of course the pump body and gear sit here and then you have another seal that's the seal that I wanted to show you that sits against the um, uh, the bell housing and I think that is about it let me just um, give you a quick shot uh, overview again of this unit Switch angles, give me one second. All right, so this is it. Again, 2011 uh, Lexus RX 350 U660E trans, and the problem was when it got hot, it had a very bad delay in drive. Reverse was okay, and again, once it did lock in, the thing worked fine, no codes. Uh, we found the cover, uh, which is the feed for the C1 clutch uh, to be worn out. There's a big ring groove in there, uh, which of course when the oil gets hot it's just blowing right by it and then it'll eventually apply but I mean you just got to put that thing in driving and literally got to just sit there uh, and that's about it for this unit um, actually what I'm going to be doing is um, a little more filming once I get my other parts I want to show you the spanner socket uh, that, I'm, that I'm getting along with the new um, large nut for this unit all right, so I will be back uh, when I get those parts. Okay, so the other cover arrived today that I'm going to be using uh, on that U660. Uh, this is the original one. This is the new one I came today. And there's a big difference uh, when you're air checking that C1 clutch between this cover and this cover. So what I actually want to do is show you the difference. I'm going to get up close and we're going to air check both of them. Um, and this one, of course, is leaking like crazy. And this one, when I pump the air in, I don't use a lot of air, but it actually holds the pressure until I release the rubber tip. So that's definitely um, what we want to see. All right, I also have the spanner socket uh, from the company adapter case that I want to show you for that large nut. I had a, I have the transmission. Uh, together except you know this is going to go on and our cover is going to go on but i didn't want to put it together yet until i showed you uh what's going on the difference between the two covers when you air check all right so i'm going to get set up with the air uh and then we're going to air check these and i'm going to show you the socket and then i guess we can just um finish the video up all righty so uh, i will be back in a moment i'm going to get a little closer okay so we have the original end cover that we're going to air check the C1 clutch and this was the end cover that was giving me the problem of a bad delay when hot 
in drive, but everything else was good. All right, so this is the C1 clutch or the forward clutch. Okay, the clutch is coming on, but just barely. And you can hear all that air leaking. All right, so let's compare that to the cover that I got today. I'm gonna switch these bearings over so everything is at the right height. All right, remember I like to use very little air to air check and it'll probably hold the pressure. There's absolutely no leak at all. So I know 100% that is my problem. Now I'm gonna finish putting this transmission together because I really gotta get this thing back in the car. And the last thing that I did want to show you This is the, I have the nut already installed, but this is the spanner socket for the large nut. Uh, I pressed the planetary through uh, the center, the center drive gear, and then the other side, you put the, the large nut on. So um, what it is, on the four and five speeds, they have a washer with tabs on it, and you bend the tabs down to unlock the, the large nut and you just give it a shot. There is, I don't even think there's a tool for it. You know, you can use like um, a blunt chisel or something and you knock it loose and it'll spin right off and you can always just put it right back on. This one, they, they peen, the threads are on a planetary just like all of them, but they peen the planetary over. There is no washer. So when you take the nut off, you know, from trying to unpeen it, you, you know, you gotta kind of hit it and then force the nut off. The threads kind of get ruined a little bit. Uh, so what I did was I just took a little time with a small file and I cleaned the threads up as best I can. And then when I went to put that new nut on, I spun that sucker right on by hand. And then <clears throat> I used the tool um, to, I, I did put it on the gun with a small extension and I did it hand tight and I gave it a shot. It was pretty much right in the area, a little past where it was so I can peen it over again. All right, and it worked out perfect. And that is the spanner socket for that nut. It's much easier if you clean the threads up. I mean, going on, you know, I did, like I said, I did it by hand, but then you gotta kinda use the, the blunt, you know, if you didn't wanna use the tool, um, you gotta kinda hit it around until it's in place, but um, it, it was very, very uh, easy. I just kinda hand tightened it gave it a shot with the gun and moved it right into place and getting it off um, you know getting it off you kind of screwed the edges here but I was it, it, it was great it was very very smooth all right I don't even know if this would fit in here because I have all those things screwed up but anyway <clears throat> that's what it looks like and then you just tighten it you know give it a tighten and that's it. Okay, so that is all. I'm going to finish putting this unit together. Uh, U660E, 2011 Lexus RX 350 delay, bad delay in drive when hot. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Have a great day, and we will see you next one.